Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. Thank you for tuning into my conversations at the intersection of arts, culture, and community. Today, today we got a special one. I am talking with a professional film curator and educator with decades of experience in art house cinemas, festivals, museums, community-based uh, and educational organizations. My guest is the festival and programming director for the upcoming Maryland Film Festival. Please welcome KJ Moore. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Rob. So I gave you actually the real intro. I didn't give you the fake one. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so thank you for coming on. Thank you for, for making the time. And um, as I like to say to everyone, you know, that, that comes on and they have four eyes. Thank you for wearing your glasses. We were all <laughs> spectacled individuals. Wouldn't see you otherwise. <laughs> so, um, right. To start off, um, I want to, I want to, want to thank you again for coming on, making the time to chat and, if you could, um, could you share maybe your your earliest encounter with creativity, with, you know, um, with film, like one of those early creative experiences that maybe influenced the direction that you, you've gone in? When you see, you know, the experience that you have, you know, I want to see you like, where's that early experience coming from? Right. Well, um, I grew up in a very small town in Wisconsin. So it and that absolutely colored my experience with film because I was, I felt like, you know, I was bigger than my small town and oh, I couldn't wait to get out of there. And, uh, and, and so I was always looking for stories and experiences beyond that. So I, you know, VHS was the medium of the time. And, um, I used our public library and just got every foreign film and indie film. I didn't realize it was indie film at the time, but it was like the stuff that I wasn't used to seeing. My dad was also a minister in this small town and, and the, the cinema company was started in, in Ripon, Wisconsin, Marcus theaters. So all of the clergy and council members in this town got to use, got to go to the movies for free. So we went to a lot of movies. Um, so what I was seeing there, though, was different from what I was able to see from the library. And it was really these um, international stories and more independent stuff that was interesting to me. And my parents, especially my dad, is something of a cinephile. So he was always bringing in, you know, like he'd tell me to go to. The, I remember when he told me to go to the video store and get Mo Betta Blues. And I was like, what does that mean? Mo Betta, you know, and. So I, I luckily had that kind of stuff in my radar. You know, it was on my radar when I was little. Um, and then um, when I went to college, University of Wisconsin-Madison, they have a really great cinema tech there and a student programming body. So I would go to all of the films that they had there. And I, I mean, it was a lot of really great stuff at the time. Double Lives of Veronique. Kieslowski is still one of my very favorite films. Um, and I was sitting behind in like my third week there, and I was sitting behind someone who in front of me was talking about this student programming body or the film committee. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> um, so I went to my first meeting the following Monday and they were looking for people to work on a women's film festival. I was like, that sounds cool. So I went to that meeting and that's just ended up programming my first festival along with um, a, a couple other people there who were starting that up. And just so I just jumped right into it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and what we were seeing for that festival was unlike anything I'd ever seen. Like, I didn't know that kind of work existed. And that's what was exciting to me It is the kind of work that you don't see on TV or in cinemas you know it was really um indie stuff docs experimental film which became one of my favorite genres um so it was really just by diving in to finding stories that i wasn't seeing otherwise because i wanted to see them so it was a little bit selfish too that or or origin of wanting to see this kind of work thank you that's it's, it's great to to set that and um have have those touch points. I find like a lot of times we have these conversations. And it's like, yeah, let's just get to the thing. What's the thing? But it's like, what's the road that led to the thing? Totally. And so I, I definitely got to ask this. Um, you know, you, you mentioned experimental, right? So what for you, like personally, not necessarily with the the festival per se or that festival experience, but 
what for you like makes for like a good story, a story that you're truly like interested in that, that you gravitate toward, like, you know, not for nothing. I, I'm on there, you know, the committee and I have horror movies on there. It's just like, it's a lot of schlock there, but a lot of good stuff, but a lot of schlock. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if my storytelling is on the same par as some of the, you know, some of my peers, but for you, what, what makes a good story? I mean, it's generally something, either something I haven't seen before, um, something that is that either I can relate to or is entirely outside of my experience because I'm not interested in seeing the same story over and over again. I want to see it told from a different angle or in a different way. Um, and, and that can be anything. Um, so it's always hard to, to say until you're really watching something, um, what makes it, special or what really draws you in it's hard to say it's sort of an intangible um but i have always been drawn to stories that are um about experiences that aren't my own because i don't care about that i've seen that enough you know and i want to um it's it, movies are a way to kind of step into someone else's shoes at least for a, a short time like that it's a good answer so Let's, let's shift gears a little bit towards the the film festival. Like, what is your? I'm curious about like your history with the Maryland Film Festival. You know, I see this year marks its 25th anniversary, uh, significant milestone, obviously. And um, you know, considering sort of the, you know the festival and, and your connection to it, talk about like how you became aligned with the festival and working with the festival and um, programming. You know, for this year, let's talk a bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, I moved to Baltimore in January of 2011 to direct the film program at Creative Alliance. Um, and Kristen Anker, who is also on our screening committee, was there before me started that whole program um, and sort of brought me in. Uh, I loved working at Creative Alliance. I loved getting to know Baltimore film communities that way. Um, we also had programs, of course, screenings. Um, but one of the things that we did was every year at Maryland Film Festival, at that time we had a tent village, and in one of the tents we would talk with filmmakers, kind of like you do. But um, during the festival, we one of the things that we could offer the festival was these taped um, interviews with filmmakers who were visiting, and then we would share them with the festival and they could use them for promotion or whatever. Um, so the first couple years was doing that, and that's kind of how I got to know the festival. And Rain Alexander, Kristen's partner, um, put me in touch with Jed and Eric at the time at, at Maryland Film Festival, and that's, um, that's how I started. After that, I did a lot of volunteering, um, I was a venue manager. I've gotten involved in a lot of festivals, starting with volunteering. Um, and I've always been involved in some way, either in a volunteer capacity or with Creative Alliance. Um, and then more recently, um, in, I think it was 2019, that Scott Braid at the time um, brought me in. I He recognized that I was in town and that I was a professional programmer and curator and and they needed someone to do the conference, the filmmaker conference and panels at the time. So I started curating those um, and then came onto the Parkway staff shortly after that and was in, in the interim there um, programming at the Parkway before the pandemic happened um, and shifted into the our, our online format. We were one of the first three theaters to do that in the country. Um, and 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 then did shorts last year. I've just kind of been involved progressively with programming and and this year I'm I'm thrilled to be uh director of programming and and the festival director. That's that's great. And it's it's good to get all of that experience of like, you know, sort of the scene and then sort of what the yeah. festival like versus like I know this one area <laughs> and I think that that helps in in pushing it along and in taking it into this this sort of milestone year you know when you see 25 years I didn't know it was 25 years when you see 25 years it's like that's a big thing so having it it come back in a big bad and bold way you know with the the branding as I can see behind you and sort of <laughs> like 
those those thoughts and sort of you know bringing in you know the committee and all it's it's really important to have that but i think having sort of an understanding of various areas and multiple festivals and in, in with this festival the different pieces of it it helps you know put it out there in a in a big bad way yeah and Maryland is really, you know, it's one of it's the preeminent festival in Maryland, of course, and it's just one of the biggest up and coming festivals and has really just grown to be that it's a destination for filmmakers. And it's just been a big part of creating a, a filmmaking hub in the mid Atlantic in general. So it's two things I want to want to ask around that, though, and in, in sort of your role in, in in programming, what does that entail? Because I, I think a lot of folks just see a title and they're like, you do all of the movies, right? You're making some of them, right? And it's like, I don't <laughs> know if that's true. What what does that in, entail? Like for you, I was going to make it a little trolly, like describe it as something else, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going <laughs> to give you a space to share, like, really, what are your uh, main responsibilities in your role as, you know, director of programming? Yeah. Um, well, it starts with, first of all, you know, we're a community festival. Yes, we're a, a filmmakers festival, and that's kind of how we've found our, our niche in the festival circuit. Um, and that's very important, but we're a, a community festival. So um, the screening committee is one important part of that, like just really trying to have many voices um because as you pointed out earlier like everyone has a different opinion and someone that's some of the best work are films that one person hates and another person loves it's like ooh, what's going on there that's where it gets really interesting um but what i do starts with um just kind of keeping a, an eye on what's happening in the film world in general you know looking at new work that filmmakers who I've worked with um, are what they're working on, what they have out when it's being released. Um, same thing with distributors all over the world, um, looking at other festivals that are before us and what we might want to bring to Maryland. Local filmmaking is a really important part of it. But the um, we try to because we're also because we are an emerging filmmakers film festival and really looking at sort of what's next on the horizon in, in filmmaking and image making in general um it shorts are really important and we get a lot of great shorts through our submissions um i think that altogether we were able to include almost 10 percent of submissions which is pretty extraordinary um and also not nearly enough to show all that you want to it's always painful what you have to let go of really painful um i'd probably like to show at least 50 percent of all of it you know yeah. um but yeah it's, so it's it's a mixture between looking at what comes to us and trying to look at that with as many eyes as possible like we have at least three people on the screening committee looking at each and every film plus um, programming team members, um, at least a couple of those. So it, it's really a lot of festivals. Um, I mean, most festivals don't have that many eyes looking at each work. Each one really gets serious consideration. And um, and then we want to create a program that is, reflects our audience, that our audience can see themselves reflected in it, and that is showing something fresh and new and sort of what um what might become big in the next in the, you know in the coming years definitely we're going to put a pen in that because i got a question related to that mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's absolutely, and I can speak, you know, sort of, I guess, secondhand, first, I don't know, um, as it relates to sort of that process being on that on that screening committee and really, you know, it had me dive back into when I was, you know, taking a few film classes in college. It's like, hmm, critically speaking, let's think about this. And there, there's a quality thing, but then also thinking of sort of the selection of like who's local with these diverse voices and, and, and having, you know, that being fulfilled as well that, you know, folks see themselves reflected, you know, in the, the media that's presented and, you know, especially some of the local um, films that are out there as well, because, you know, I'm going through it and I'm like, you know, watching different things starting off with some of the the shorter films and then starting off with the features and really getting a gauge of what's coming out there and and for me in, in doing this and having you on and even you know talking with folks i proudly waved that banner like hey man I'm, I'm there you know you should come you should check it out and it's almost an endorsement you know for yeah. me 
So definitely having something that's reflect reflective of the community and um, the people that are in it. Exactly. So this is sort of the other the other question. So it's not all, you know, peaches and cream, uh, you know, gold roads and all of that. What were some of the challenges in, in, in coming back for for this year in in this way? Because, you know, there was the online version you mentioned, sort of the pandemic and all. And I can speak firsthand and being in Station North, like, you know, working and doing stuff at big and in different places in the area. That area has really gotten hit and it's the creative like heart, in my opinion, of the city. So what are some of the challenges in, in bringing back, you know, the, the, the festival in, in this way? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, there's the hurdle of we weren't around last year. So just making sure that everyone knows that we're back and continuing and um, and that this is a, a big year. I mean, this is a really exciting year. And um, and I think that we have done that. It, you know, at, at first it feels a little bit like, OK, can we are we going to be able to spread the word and like get make sure that everyone knows that? And I think that that has been, um, you know, those fears are, are, are no longer there. I don't know if I have a good good answer for you on that one, Rob. <laughs> no, it's it's all good, and 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 it is sort of. I think you you hit the nail on the head with sort of the the larger one. Like, hey, we're back, you know. Um, that being a thing, because it's it's a lot of questions, like in that that area, and I think, you know, it's 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 an interesting area in that there's so many different things to do, but then there's a question of what's open, what's around, what can I get to, and I can speak, you know, from previous years um, with the festival, just seeing folks around. I was like, you're here for the festival. I, I could see it. You know, I could see it on people's faces. It's like when they're around the neighborhood. Right? Yeah. yeah. Going to my coffee shop, staying in my lines. I'm trying to get there and get my coffee. And you hogging up the line with all of your cinephile and <laughs> let it be. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, having having it back, I think it's 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 a net positive. It's a huge thing. And Jen, being able to, you know, explore, explore that, that part of the city, you know, it's a it's a good intersecting point being in Station North, you know. Yeah. And there are um, some great new um, shops and cl clubs there, you know, Club Car right across the street, which is going to be our filmmaker lounge and Mobtown Ballrooms moved in on the other end of North Avenue Market. And, um, you know, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, lo love, uh, love Mob Town. I go there pretty regularly. Uh, <laughs> so, awesome. I I, I want to go back into, um, and we were touching on a little bit some of the uh, some of the films that you know just macroly because it's you know as you touched on before we got started, you know it's kind of like spreadsheets. It's like you remember them, but it's just like it's a lot of records here. Right. So, what what is sticking out as far as what's forthcoming in terms of the the festival, what have you? Like any particular themes or voices, um, th trends that are like popping up in some of the films that are coming out. Any like technology or um, techniques that are being used that you're seeing? Like okay, this is this is good. This is the direction we're headed in. What are you seeing? Uh -huh. Well, one of the things I, I mean I want to point out is that we are focusing on emerging technologies within moving image creation. Um, and we have a whole Cinetech portion of the festival this year um, in the lobbies. And um, it'll just be kind of throughout the festival, which I'm really excited about because we've never done that before. And um, being able to do that and just really look into the future of moving image. Um, but within the, the main slate of features and, and also with a lot of the shorts, um, at, at first I was, the, some of the first films that we locked were really sort of like coming of age stories and young women. And I was like, why is this happening? <laughs> like, why are, why, why are there, um, you know, a few really important stories that are um, sort of in, in this young women just kind of figuring out life. And then I realized, well, we're an emerging filmmaker festival. So like, that's naturally going to happen. And then I, I think too, like young women are especially are really under attack right now. And we need to focus on these stories um, and support uh, filmmakers like this. So um, that's one thing for sure. Just kind of like figuring out life and, um, and that probably happens frequently with Maryland Film Festival. It's kind of a, a general theme of of the festival. Um, but I'm super excited about some of the local 
docs like um more than hype and the um party that we're going to have after that um over at the garage recreating the the paradox nice. um one night at the docks um so just like kind of kind of the the verite style of things like squeegee you know some of the local films that are really really strong and really just show what an amazing film culture we have here in baltimore um look back at it felicia pride's uh short that's going to be closing out the festival on sunday um all like really pointing to a very strong industry in maryland that we really want to grow and um and just see more of in the coming years. So I'm excited, especially about what's going to be happening with with Cinetech, but also just what's happening in Baltimore. That's that's great. And big shout out to uh, to Larry, uh, Larry Cardell, Larry, what up? You know, up? Uh, more than hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, because that you know that er that area. Like when I you know I do these interviews, I talk to a lot of different people who have like sort of the history, the archival thing. And I remember, you know, doing this interview at, at Big with, um, you know, DJ Scotty B. And, and he was talking about it. He was just like, you know, this used to be this place. It used to be these different clubs. And I was like the ghost of Baltimore club hopping back in the day. So seeing that that Larry and his background and the folks that he's working with were like, we need to document that. And then having sort of this, the full circleness of it, you know, of yeah. having sort of in the film festival and then having like this recreation of the party, that is something oh, that, yeah. you know, you got to get behind. <laughs> I got to say, yeah, like being able to like sit in a Zoom with Wayne Davis, who is like re envisioning the paradox. It's like, <laughs> is this my life? Yeah, it was it's <laughs> really, really awesome. I'm just so excited because he is just recreating it for us. That is that's wonderful. Um, yeah. so, so I think like the majority of my real questions actually have um, been covered. So I what I want to do in these final moments is um, I got some rapid fire questions for you. I always have right. the yes, yeah, because you know sometimes uh, okay. you get nervous. You get nervous with these questions. Yeah, take a deep breath. You know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I got I got three of them. They're not you know. Um, what is your all time? No, actually, that's a little weird. Because <laughs> yeah, you don't ask people in the film, what's your all-time favorite movie? Well, it depends on if we're talking. Oh, God, that's hard. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the last non-festival-related movie that you watched? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, it's kind of not fair because I teach um, in the MFA filmmaking program at MICA, and I showed Daughters of the Dust last night. But Daughters of the Dust is also the first film that I showed in that film festival in 1992 at the University of Wisconsin on 16 millimeter film in like a big cafeteria. Um, and I love that movie. Um, and I could watch it every day and still find new wonderful things in it. Um, but the only film that I have watched, the only film I have been allowed to watch uh, was on my eighth anniversary with my partner. We went to American Fiction. But other than that, I haven't seen anything in a theater since since I started this job. <laughs> well, I, I've seen American fiction. Uh, we may have to trade notes about that, that flick. Uh, I, I, I may have seen myself in it. We'll talk later. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. So here's the next one. I definitely got to ask this. Anytime I have any festival person and filmmaker, what have you, I ask this question. Popcorn or candy? What is your go to festival snack? Are you snacking at the festival? Hell yeah. Can I mix popcorn and milk does? I like okay. to kind of get, this is kind of gross, I get the milk dot a little bit masticated in there, you know, I get it chewy and then have some popcorn and it's like caramel corn. It is. It is. Um, my partner does this, not the, not the same thing with the making your own like mouth caramel corn. Not that, <laughs> but um, she she does the m and She's like, look, you know, I'm going to need a box of m ms and this popcorn. I was just like, all right, so some of that for me. She's like, oh, no, 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 you got to get your own. I was like, that oh, is wow. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's what it is. I'm just like, yeah, where's the beer? That's that's just what I'm doing. You know, uh huh. Get yeah. a couple like tall natty bows. Oh yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I'm I'm a little bougie. I might say, can you have vermouth here for noted podcaster Rob? La la. Yeah, yeah. Um. So this this one I'm very curious about because it's one of the categories within um within the the film freeway. Um. Do you like? Do you prefer? A daytime screening or late night showings? What is your like ideal sort of like, I'm going to watch this, you know, like, am I, are you resting up during the day or is it like, nah, let's get this, let's get this done early while I'm fresh. Yeah. 
Well, that has really changed for me in my old age. And since I can't stay up past 9 p.m. anymore, all of those late night screenings are for our younger crowds. Um, and I will be there in the late afternoon, early evening. I might even go to something at 10 a.m., but definitely not at 11. I mean, for the 26th iteration of this, right? We could just right. say we're having our pajama screen. You know, you have matinee. It's like, this is the pajama one. That's a great idea. <laughs> our Actually, our marketing director, Q, always wants to do that and just have cereal there. You know, like come in your pajamas and we'll have like just a table full of cereals and various milks of various varieties. But this, and bring it out in the theater and slurp it up. This might be a, a version of an idea I've kicked around a few times of like Saturday morning cartoons and screen old episodes of Power Rangers. Like, here's the, <laughs> let's do it. You know, it's the anniversary. Well, last year was the anniversary year. It doesn't matter. Um, so those are actually all of my questions. Um, so there's two things I want to do in these, these final moments here. Mm -hmm. One, I want to thank you so, so much for coming on and being a part of this podcast. Thank you, Rob. And two, I want to invite and encourage you to, in these final moments, make it a win. Um, tell folks where to where to check you out, where to check out the festival, where to buy tickets to the festival, all of that good stuff. Give them the dates, website, all of that pertinent information. The floor Thank is you. yours. Thank you. All right. So Maryland Film Festival, our 25th anniversary celebration is running May 2nd to 5th in Station North. Um, it's mostly at the Parkway Theater, but we'll also be at Lazarus Center at MICA, and we do have our trans shorts under the stars down at Current Space in Mount Vernon, after parties at The Crown and The Garage, in addition to the Parkway. Um, we, it's really a festival for everyone, all ages, all interests, all budgets. We have some free screenings, free panels, um, and parties are open to anyone. If you don't like movies, you still like to party. Um, everyone is is welcome. We just would love to see everyone from all over Baltimore there. And you can always look at our website for any details and ticket info. The schedule went live this week. So that's um, mdfilmfest.com. And uh, just really want to see, especially folks who've never come before, want to see a lot of new festival goers and um, we have all ages programs for kids starting each day that are free um, and everybody is welcome. It's great. It's fantastic. I may, may close out. So there you have it, folks. I want to again thank AJ Moore from the Maryland Film Festival for coming on and sharing a bit about the festival and about their story a bit. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there's art, culture and community in and around your neck of the woods. You've just got to look for it. Oh,